Item number SCP-826 Object Class Safe Special Containment Procedures SCP-826 is to be kept in a 25cm by 25cm safe with a numerical keypad lock. The combination for the lock will be given only to those with Level 2 clearance and will be changed on a weekly basis. Description: SCP-826 is a 20cm by 15cm pair of bookends, molded in the shape of two outward-facing dragon heads. Scrapings from the surface of SCP-826 revealed a composition of 99% tin, 0.5% copper, 0.3% antimony, and 0.2% lead, consistent with high-grade pewter. However, it is unclear whether SCP-826 is solid pewter or whether the pewter is merely a plating for some unknown element, which gives the SCP its properties. When a subject places a book between SCP-826, touching both ends, and leaves the room, SCP-826 will, in an instantaneous process, convert the interior of whatever room it is currently located in, a room defined as an enclosed area into the setting of the contained book. Any form of entry into the room will instead open into a random location within the book setting. During this transformation process, SCP-826, along with the contained book, will relocate to another part of the book setting, showing a preference for places where books are normally found – libraries, studies, etc. To reverse the effects of SCP-826, a subject must remove the book from SCP-826, then exit whatever room SCP-826 was found in. The subject will find themselves outside the original room of SCP-826's containment, while SCP-826's containment room will be restored to normal. In addition, the subject will find themselves at a random temporal location in the book's plot, ranging from the beginning to near the end of the book. If the subject does not find SCP-826 within the setting before the end of the book, SCP-826 will reset the setting, starting the book's plot over. The subject will then be incorporated into the book as a background character, losing all memories of a previous life outside of SCP-826. Researchers studying SCP-826 are advised to enter the results into Experiment Log-826. Experiment Log 826 Experiment Logs are requested to be written in the following format. Head Researcher Subject Material Equipment Results Addendum Optional Head Researcher Doctor Subject Agent Book Little House on the Prairie Equipment One GPS Locator One Two-Way Radio one canteen filled with water, one watch, one 9mm semi-automatic with extra cartridges. Results. Upon entry into the affected area, all communications and transmissions immediately ceased. After a period of five minutes, Agent emerged from the door unharmed. Agent was dropped in the middle of a prairie with a green smudge off to the west presumably the Verdigris River of the book. Agent walked towards the river for approximately an hour before coming across an individual claiming to be Charles Ingalls, who invited him for dinner. Agent accompanied Ingalls back to his home, a log cabin in the prairie, where he met the rest of his family and discovered SCP-826 sitting on the mantelpiece. When Agent pointed out SCP-826 to the family, they claimed SCP-826 was not there before, but did not appear concerned about its presence. Agent then ate dinner with the family, and afterwards asked if he could take the SCP-contained book with him. The family allowed him to take the book. Agent proceeded to remove the book from SCP-826 and exit through the cabin door into the research team's room. Display time on watch is consistent with Agent report that he had spent several hours in the setting. Addendum. Examination of the affected copy of the book reveals an additional paragraph in the book's midsection, describing Agent Visit 
in language consistent with Laurel Ingalls Wilder's style. No mention is made, however, of SCP-826. Agent is simply described as having dinner and leaving. The textual deviation is unique to the affected copy of the book. Subject Agent Movie The Shining DVD Equipment One GPS locator One two-way radio One canteen filled with water One watch One 9mm semi-automatic with extra cartridges One video camera attached to Agent's hat Results. After Agent entered SCP containing room, GPS and radio proceeded to malfunction as in previous experiment. After roughly 30 seconds, Agent exited the room and gave video camera to research team. Tape was playable and contained the following footage. Agent enters into a hotel room from what appeared to be a closet and, after exploring the room and confirming she could not exit through the closet, leaves the room. Agent continues down hallway, and eventually arrives in hotel lobby. Agent explores behind front desk and enters hotel manager's office, where SCP-826 sits on shelf beside hotel ledgers. Agent removes DVD from SCP-826 and exits through office door into research room. Addendum. Examination of DVD copy revealed no major plot deviations most likely due to the fact Agent did not interact with any of the characters. Experiment demonstrates that SCP-826 can work on DVDs as well as books. Subject, Agent Book The Mammoth's Book of Comic Fantasy A collection of short stories Equipment One canteen filled with water One watch One 9mm semi-automatic with extra cartridges one video camera attached to Agent's headset. Note, use of GPS locator and two-way radio discontinued, due to their uselessness in previous tests. Results. Agent returned after seven minutes, having experienced and recorded just over nine hours. Examination of the recorded footage reveals that the Agent experienced a portion of the short story The Eye of Tandala and was forced to defend himself from temple guards, killing two. This caused the alarm to be raised, and though Agent was able to retrieve the book from a temple library and escape, the protagonists were apparently caught and executed. The altered copy of the book now reflects his change, although the cause of the alarm is not mentioned, with other stories remaining unaltered. It should also be noted that the book now contains seven fewer pages than a standard unaltered copy. Dr. Blank requests that further experiments be performed with books of short stories, to determine whether the entire book will be experienced or just a single story, if the book is not recovered from SCP-826 before the story's end. Head Researcher Dr. Edison Subject Agent Book The Sword That Shoots Laser Beams When You Swing It A three-page short story written by Dr. Edison the story consists of a poetic description of a sword that shoots laser beams when swung. The story states it stands on a pedestal as thousands of years pass uneventfully. Equipment: One canteen filled with water One watch One video camera attached to Agent's headset Results. Subject is instructed to retrieve the aforementioned sword, test its magical properties, and then bring it out. Subject enters door, and returns five minutes later with the original story, and sword testing proved that sword, when swung in an arc greater than 45 degrees, emits a beam of radiation consistent with the output of a CO2 laser. Sword has since been assigned to Dr. Edison for further study, to determine energy source, laser medium, and optical resonators. Video logs show that the sword in question matched textual descriptions including the ability to shoot laser beams, and that Agent did indeed bring the sword with him. The story itself remains unchanged, except for a paragraph about a man matching Agent description stealing the sword and taking it to parts unknown. Sword has been dubbed SCP-826-1. Addendum: Scientific testing has proven inconclusive. 
Molecular analysis shows that SCP-826-1 has a molecular structure consistent with laser printer paper, the medium original story was printed on, yet behaves like high-grade steel in all other respects. The laser beam, on the other hand, acts like a CO2 laser in all respects but speed, which is clocked at a mere 60 km per hour, far slower than conventional lasers. Attempts to collect its energy have proven futile, as energy dissipates within seconds regardless of hitting a target. A further note, Agent has come under the delusion that he is a man named Galthor from the Kingdom of Zolgorn. Agent has insisted on the return of SCP-826-1 to his homeland, and to be released from whatever foul sorcery he has been placed under. All attempts at treatment have proven futile. Dr. Edison requests that all further testing with SCP-826 is to be done by D-Class subjects. Addendum 2 At precisely on exactly 72 hours from Agent last trip into SCP-826, Agent and SCP-826-1 simultaneously disappeared. No trace had been found of the two and Agent's existence has been stripped from all Foundation records, including backup copies. The story used in the test in all aspects identical, barring a mention that the man's name was Galthor. Once again, Dr. Edison suggests that further testing of SCP-826 is to be done by D-Class subjects. Subject D-826-01 Book the Sword That Shoots Laser Beams When You Swing It A three-page short story written by Dr. Edison Same copy that resulted from previous test, alterations and all. Equipment One canteen filled with water One watch One video camera attached to subject's headset One police issue X-26 taser, loaded Results Subject is asked to retrieve agent Subject does not return after five minutes. Agent enters SCP-826 and retrieves the story without incident. Story now has additional details on a man in strange garb trying to stop Agent with a magic weapon hereby unknown to man, which matches the description of X-26 police taser. Story then describes Agent injuring D-826-01 with SCP-826-01 before locking him in the foulest of dungeons in Castle Hyleth. Recovered footage confirms incident. Subject D-826-02 D-826-03 D-826-04 D-826-05 D-826-06 and D-826-07 all of whom have military training. Book The Sword That Shoots Laser Beams When You Swing It A three-page short story written by Dr. Edison. Same copy that resulted from previous test. Equipment Six canteens filled with water. Six watches. Six video cameras attached to subjects' headsets. Six police issue X-26 tasers. Loaded. Results Subjects given successfully apprehend Agent and D-826-01, leaving SCP-826-01 behind. Story acknowledges all changes, describing six rogues who clamored to avenge the blood of their fallen brother, capturing Agent Addendum Agent still experiencing pathological delusions and remains convinced that he is a knight named Galthor. Likewise, D-826-01 claims to be a blood wizard named Rothmorn, seeking to claim SCP-826-01 to himself. D-826-01's X-26 taser has turned into a magic staff capable of shooting lightning, and is hypothesized to have physical properties similar to SCP-826-01. Item has been labeled SCP-826-02 and has been sent to site for further testing. Also, subjects D-826-02, D-826-03, D-826-04, D-826-05, 
DA-26-06 and DA-26-07 are now claiming to be Knights of the Throne sent to aid Galthor. Addendum 2 As in the previous experiment, Agent Subjects DA-26-02 DA-26-03 DA-26-04 DA-26-05 DA-26-06 and DA-26-07 and SCPA-26-02 disappeared at on again exactly 72 hours from exiting SCPA-26. Story now says that Galthor was indeed accompanied by six Knights of the Throne, who were armed with arcane weapons given to them by the good wizard Edison Grad. All researchers that have been handling SCP-826-02 or SCP-826 are accounted for. Further monitoring of researchers handling objects from SCP-826 is recommended. Okay, seriously, how did that thing know my name? I'm sure I didn't tell it to either of the agents, and I'm damn sure I didn't tell any of the subjects. I know this turns up so much in our line of work that it's kinda cliché, but I think the thing might just be sentient. Dr. Edison Head Researcher Dr. Aaron Torres Subject D-87631 Material A copy of A Game of Thrones by George R. R. Martin Equipment One military-grade saber Results The purpose of the test was to determine how significantly SCP-826 will allow alterations to the main storyline. Test subject was instructed to disembowel the first person it saw in the work. Upon entering, subject found itself in a circular room, alone with the character Lord Eddard Stark, who was unarmed. Subject attempted to stab Stark, but tripped and fell before he could do so. Subject recovered and tried multiple times to approach Stark, but tripped on multiple inconveniently placed objects. Subject eventually managed to stab Stark, but apparently only gave a minor wound. Subject retreated from the room, and eventually found a book in a library within the castle. Upon retrieval, the text itself had not been significantly altered. The only recorded changes to the text were multiple new paragraphs regarding an attempt on Stark's life by quote, a rather unintelligent and bumbling assassin. Unquote. Presumably, SCP-826 will adjust settings and events in minor ways to prevent major changes to the work's core continuity. Head Researcher Dr. King Subject D-48279 Material The Odd Couple by Neil Simon Equipment One Head-Mounted Camera Results Subject arrived in a landscape consistent with Pioneer-era America. He encounters a man traveling down a road, matching historical descriptions of Jonathan Chapman, who greets the subject and continues walking. Subject sees SCP-826 in the branches of a nearby tree, then returns to the testing chamber through a passage in the hollow of said tree. The book originally placed in SCP-826 is found to have been replaced with a modified copy of Johnny Appleseed by Rosemary Carr Binet. Head Researcher Dr. Praetorius Subject D-21094 Material Death by the Book by Juliana Deering Equipment One canteen filled with water One watch One video camera attached to test subject's headset Results Upon entering, the test subject returned after 15 minutes. After interviewing the subject and reviewing the footage, it was discovered that the beginning of the novel was the first location found by the subject, being the murder scene that is investigated by the main characters and sets the stage for the remainder of the book. The characters, being from a 1930s period piece, reacted inquisitively to the D-Class's alien clothing and behavior but did not impede the subject's examination of the surroundings. In fact, at one point the investigator, Chief Inspector Birdsong, interpreted the orange jumpsuit worn by the subject as meaning they were from the coroner's office, and encouraged them to wait nearby until he would finish examining the crime scene. It was at this time that video showed the murder weapon used in the crime 
and sitting next to the body, originally written as a marble bookend shaped like a bust of William Shakespeare, was in fact one half of SCP-826. The novel that had been entered was lying on the floor, roughly halfway between the murder weapon and the other half of SCP-826. The test subject immediately retrieved the novel, despite the protest of the characters, and exited the novel before they could react. Upon examination, the novel now contained an additional character to the first chapter, described as an quote, opportunistic thief, unquote, who took advantage of the crime scene to quote, pilfer the belongings of the deceased. Unquote. Of special note is that the murder weapon was now a quote, handsome bookend of particular high quality. Unquote. This is the first reported incident of SCP-826 integrating itself into the plot of a novel. It might be an indicator of sentience, or merely the narrative taking advantage of the fact that the SCP is identical to an item already in the novel. More testing is suggested.